incorporate vertical and horizontal lines. Although they don't fit the classic linear model, it is important to understand how we write equations for horizontal and vertical lines. The first exercise will illustrate the idea. Never forget, though, that when we create an equation for a curve, it simply describes what all points on the curve share in common. So let's look at this first horizontal line. Write down two coordinate points. So the two coordinate points that are here, this first one on the left is negative 3, positive 4. And the second point is positive 5, positive 4. So what they have in common is that their y is 4. They both have y equals 4. So this line's equation is going to be y equals 4. <coughs> Let's look at this next one. Two coordinate points. So the first one is 2, 4. And the second equation is 2, oops, sorry, that didn't make sense, is 2, negative 1. What they have in common is that x equals 2, so our equation is x equals 2. Pretty simple, right? <coughs> They're so simple that they will, you will often get them confused later because you don't really seem like typical linear equations. So the trick is, for a horizontal line, that's when y equals the number that's the same all the way through. And a vertical line is when x equals the number that's the same all the way through. So which one represents a vertical line that passes through the point 5, negative 3? Keep in mind, it's a vertical line. So looking up above, vertical line is when x is constant. So it's got to have 5 for the x, and it's when only x equals 5. y equals negative 3 is going to be a horizontal line because that's y equals a constant. And the other two are going to be a diagonal line because they're y equals mx plus b. <coughs> it's important to be able to quickly and accurately graph vertical and horizontal lines as well as give their equations. So letter A is a vertical line. So it's going to be x equals, because it's an up and down line, the x does not change. And at that line, x is always 3. Number Letter B is also a vertical line. So it's x equals... And it's when x, what is x every single point? x is always negative 4. Letter C, that's a horizontal line, so it's going to be y equals, and it's y equals 1. The other thing that's really important to pay attention to is that for letter A, it is never crossing the y-axis, so it will never have y in the equation. Letter B, never crosses the y-axis, it will never have y in the equation. Letter C, never crosses the x-axis, so we'll never have x in the equation. All right, letter D, it's a vertical line, never crosses the y-axis, so it will never have y in the equation. And in this one, x is always 5. This is a horizontal, so y is always 4. And it's horizontal, so y is always 2. The equation of a vertical line passing through the point, negative 4, 5, Vertical line only pays attention to the x, so it's x equals negative 4. And a horizontal line only pays attention to the y, so it's y equals 2. Sketch the region bounded by the three lines whose equations are given below. Label each with its equation. Find the area of the triangular region enclosed by the lines. You may want to use your calculator to create a table of values of the first line or simply use facts about slope and y-intercept. <coughs> so I'm going to use yellow for the first line. The y-intercept is negative 4. The slope is 2, so that means up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. So this is, we're going to pretend that's a perfectly straight line. My next one, x equals a negative 1, so we go where x equals a negative 1. And that's going to be a vertical line. And my third one is y equals 2. So it's y equals 2. So the region that is bound by all three is this section right here. And it says to find the area of the triangle. 
Well, this one is something we haven't gone over before. It's using the um, it, the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm not going to go over the Pythagorean theorem yet, but what I'm going to do is we're going to see if, if we were to sketch and make this a whole rectangle, what would the area of that rectangle be? Well, this side length right here is 4, and this side length right here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 4 times 8 is 32, but since we're doing the triangle, which is half of it, we divide it by 2, so the area is 16 units squared.